Matthew Holt with Health Care Blog and with Catalyst at Health 2.0. Uh, thrilled to be here with Julia Cheek. Julia is the CEO of Everly Well. And thanks for putting on your T-shirt, Julia, so I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for, for uh, you know, representing. No, no, bravo, fantastic. I've got my branding behind me, so, so <laughs> that just, but my banner just hides the mess that's my office. All right. Uh, so really exciting that uh, we are in quite a moment with COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, Everly Well, for those who don't know, is one of the leading at-home testing uh, organizations. Um, you've been around about five years. You were on Shark Tank a couple of years ago, got an investment uh, from Rory Grenier. Was it from Rory? It was from Rory. Right, right. So, uh, but, but uh, that's a small investment. You've had a lot of, you raised a lot of venture capital and a lot of work in this. But uh, obviously, you've been at the forefront of looking at the experience of um, what is going on right now with COVID testing. We're doing this um, for at least on Saturday, the 14th of March. Um, and you just issued earlier this week, Julia, a challenge of uh, up to $2 million, I think, $1 million or something, of $250,000 each for labs in the, in, you know, to, get, uh, to get closer to be able to do COVID testing. So first things first, you obviously been looking at this, what is the current state of play? A lot of confusion here about the, that you understand about the availability of testing. It seems to be very hard to get one unless you play for an NBA team. Yes, it is. Um, the current state of play as of the 12th of March, so Thursday the 12th, is that nationally, if you aggregated all labs doing testing in the U.S., we have the capacity to run 20,000 samples per day. Just about five days ago, that number was around 5,000. So by and large, what everyone needs to know is that we have significantly underinvested for years in testing capacity, and we were very ill prepared to respond to this pandemic. And the messaging around having a million or more tests being available has simply not come to fruition, whether it is through the two major players of LabCorp and Quest who are responding as quickly as they can, or through hospital or government related labs. And so those labs that do have capacity have to ration, and that's why you see these very tight clinical protocols, oftentimes inconsistent between cities and between states. Um, however, the tight protocols say you cannot get a test unless your symptoms are very advanced. The challenge with that is if you don't have a wider aperture for testing, you miss any chance of containment. And so that is how the US's response has really failed in comparison to what you saw in South Korea, what you saw in Taiwan, Vietnam, and even to an extent in China. Okay. so. In that context, what was the challenge and the million dollar payment, million dollar challenge you issued uh, just earlier this week? So two weeks ago, the FDA um, issued emergency guidelines for CLIA certified labs in the U.S. to be able to, to start to run coronavirus um, 19, COVID-19 testing um, if they submitted an uh, emergency use authorization um, within two weeks and they met certain validation criteria for accuracy. So that was sort of a call to action for labs around the country to start to build this capacity after some of the missteps with faulty reagents, et cetera, from the CDC. However, what we immediately saw at Everly Well was naturally the labs started responding by trying to validate clinical setting tests. Well, that of course was the first order of business, but we quickly predicted with the virus curve that healthcare facilities will not only be overrun in the coming weeks, but you actually don't want people who are symptomatic yet not in high risk categories to be exiting their homes and going into healthcare facilities to get tested. So our call to action, which was a million dollar um, incentive development grant to uh, up to 10 labs, maximum of 250K um, each, was to hopefully accelerate and get attention on validating a kit that can be a swab kit collected in the home and then processed in a certified lab setting using the same panels as um, these other partners are using in a clinical setting. And so that's really, that's what we were trying to accelerate and focus on was this immediate need that we saw of taking the testing out of the healthcare setting and into the isolation setting that we're hoping people are in. Okay, um, so to break that down a bit, uh, you are in the goal, you're, you're in the business of distributing kits to homes mm -hmm. and uh, with a company software so we can track that. And then you will typically, if you're doing this for any of your other tests, will be distributing it back to the certified labs. And you're trying to get those kits um, sort of in the wider 
uh, availability or are you trying to get the labs to create the kits? That's that I'm a bit confused about who does what at this part. I would say it's both. Um, so one of the recent um, revelations is actually there's a global shortage of the components that just go in the kit right. itself. So Everly Well is working ourselves on getting access to large amounts of supply of these swabs, preservatives, et cetera. Then we also need the labs to actually validate this and to meet the FDA requirements for the emergency use, use authorization. That also requires certain supplies that are in scarcity like reagents um, mm -hmm. that are often now experiencing price gouging, et cetera. So it's everly well solving the physical manufacturing of the kit problem while incentivizing labs to validate the assay and make sure that it's accurate. So yes, the process will work the same. We will distribute the kits through our technology. We will have a physician involved and you'll be able to get a diagnosis, um, which is a third party group. That's how our testing works anyway. Um, but it has been more complex in the sense that we're we're trying to compress what is normally, you know, a two or three month process to launch a panel to two weeks working with multiple labs and in a very restricted supply chain environment. Okay, so it's been a few days since you issued that challenge. What's been the response so far? The response, we issued the challenge exactly seven days ago. The response has been truly overwhelming. Um, so we have had over 100,000 people engage, whether that's share, respond, send labs over, et cetera. We've had almost 20 labs apply for the grant, and all of these labs had to have a minimum immediate capacity of 5,000 samples a day with willingness to invest in more capacity if backed by Everly Well. So when you think about aggregating and pooling that capacity, it's pretty impactful. So we are now today, applications are due um, uh, late on Friday night. So today we'll be deciding and actually shortening. We weren't even going to make the awards until Friday the 20th. We're actually going to be issuing and funding the awards by Monday. Okay, so that's a really compressed number. Um, the, uh, I would assume these 20 labs do not include uh, LabCorp and Quest, the two giants. So do, or what's their relationship um, to, to you and what's their relationship to sort of, they, they've been called out by uh, the administration, Scott Gottlieb and others. Um, so how does that work between them and the small labs? So we've been in conversations with LabCorp and Quest. Um, they are fully focused on meeting the clinical need, the clinical setting and hospital setting response um, right now, which still does require significant capacity building. They have a home kit on the horizon, um, but they believe that'll be a number of weeks and months after meeting this initial need. We actually have had several grant applications from some of the other largest national labs um, in the country. We also already work with several large national lab partners. And so um, the challenge here is not every lab is certified to be a high level infectious disease lab. And so we have been able now to build relationships with labs we hadn't previously worked with that are on par with LabCorp and Quest, but are probably not household names. Okay, um, so two last things. Uh, you okay. just went on Shark Tank and made an announcement. What was that? So we just went on Shark Tank for a follow-up segment, which was super fun, filmed in Austin, um, which was really great for our team. And really, we were really proud to announce with Lori that we are one of her best-selling companies ever, and it puts us in the top 10 of all Shark Tank companies in 11 seasons, having just aired two years ago. So um, we announced $65 million in sales. Um, obviously, for a growth curve, a lot of that has been in recent months. Um, and just really proud of the team to be able to kind of celebrate that with them. When we originally aired and when I pitched, it was a company of 10 people, um, and now we have over 90. Oh, it's fantastic growth and very exciting. Um, and then give me your sense about, you know, obviously no one can project exactly how it's going to play out. But over the next <clears throat> couple of weeks, I mean, it sounds like, you know, self-quarantined at-home testing, I'm coughing away myself now, so I should get one, <laughs> is, is, you know, is an obvious thing to do compared to people doing, driving up to parking lots and other stuff you've heard. What's the, do you think, the capacity for, for company for Everly, Everly Well and other companies doing at-home testing to, to get kits out there and to sort of get to the level of testing we've seen in South Korea and Taiwan and elsewhere. What do you think we could do in the next few weeks here? So I think for home kit testing, our goal would be that we can be at 250,000 um, tests per day, ideally in the first month. Um, the challenge is going to be supply chain. It's not going to be lab capacity. Many of our labs already have 
the Roche platform that we've talked about um, and that you saw announced today. That is a platform that's going to greatly increase throughput and I think help from a processing standpoint, but we have to be able to unlock the actual component piece here. The largest manufacturer of these swaps is actually based out of Italy. Um, and so we are working now on that. And I think that's, that's a national problem that we need to solve. Um, so I'm hoping the HomeKit component can be as large, if not larger, than the clinical setting, which is the only way that we try to stop, acknowledge, and stop the spread of this at this point. Okay, well, Julia, I want to congratulate you. Fantastic work, you know, not only getting Everly Well up to the scale it's done before the last few weeks, but also sure. jumping in and taking a real, you know, leadership role in the industry of testing and at home testing. And, you know, obviously it's something we all need to do. We haven't done enough testing and hopefully we can uh, get there before we get to the sort of Italy type situation. So, you know, things cross yes. between us. We are on a breakneck pace of ideally um, one week uh, on a wide range, two weeks, and I will keep you posted. All right. So I've been checking with Julia Cheek. She is the CEO of Everly Well based down in Austin in Texas and working hard to figure out the uh, home testing solution for the current COVID-19. Julia, thanks for your time. Thanks so much.